today we are going to dive into Bloom's Taxonomy, what it is, and how it is used to develop course learning outcomes. In 1956, Benjamin Bloom, a cognitive psychologist and fellow collaborators, developed the Taxonomy of Educational Goals, or what is commonly known as Bloom's Taxonomy. These educational goals consist of six major categories, knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. But in the 1990s, a group of cognitive psychologists, curriculum theorists, instructional researchers, and testing and assignment specialists revised the taxonomy to a more dynamic classification. This new classification is remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. As you can see, the hierarchical structure of Bloom's taxonomy builds upon each category with the lower order of thinking categories building up to the higher order of thinking categories. With the list shown side by side, you can see that the new taxonomy uses action verbs that reflect the active nature of learning. You will also notice that synthesis has been changed to creating and is now at the top of the pyramid. The other thing that has been changed is that knowledge has been removed, since knowledge is actually the basis for all of these six cognitive processes. Knowledge now has its own dimension in the taxonomy and is broken down into four cognitive categories. Factual knowledge, which has to do with a knowledge of specific details and elements, or in other words, facts. Conceptual knowledge is the knowledge of theories, models, structures, and generalizations, and is information that connects the factual knowledge. Procedural knowledge has more to do with specific processes like skills, algorithms, techniques, and methods. And then there's metacognitive knowledge. It is about cognitive tasks, including appropriate contextual and conditional knowledge. So how can Bloom's taxonomy help you create learning outcomes? As we discussed previously in the video, the hierarchical nature of Bloom's taxonomy lends itself to how a student learns. Before they can understand a concept, they need to remember it. Before they can apply a concept, they must first understand it. Before a student can evaluate a concept, they must have analyzed it. And to be able to create an accurate conclusion, they must have thoroughly evaluated it. To better help you create your course learning outcomes, we will look at the Bloom's Taxonomy Wheel. These six levels of learning can be used to develop course learning outcomes. Let's define each level and list some of the associated action verbs we can use in creating our learning outcomes. The first level is remembering. It is defined as retrieving, recalling, or recognizing knowledge from memory. Some of the key verbs associated with remembering are recognizing, listing, describing, and locating. This piece of the wheel shows additional key verbs as well as possible activities associated with the verbs. So the next level is understanding. It is defined as constructing meaning from different types of function, whether they are written or displayed graphically. Some of the key verbs include summarizing, inferring, paraphrasing, and classifying. The next level is applying. It is carrying out or using a procedure through executing or implementing. Some of the key verbs associated with applying include carrying out, executing, loading, and operating. So level four is analyzing, and it is the breaking material or concepts into parts, determining how the parts relate or interrelate to one another or to an overall structure or purpose. Some of the key verbs of analyzing include comparing, organizing, deconstructing, and outlining. The next level is evaluating. It is making judgments based on criteria and standards through checking and critiquing. Some of the key verbs include hypothesizing, experimenting, critiquing, judging, and testing. And the final level is creating. It is putting the elements together to form a coherent or functional whole. Some of the key verbs associated with creating are designing, constructing, animating, video casting, and inventing. Now that we have gone over each category and have seen some verbs and activities associated with each category, we will be able to use this wheel to help us create our course learning outcomes. 
When creating our course learning outcomes, we must first determine what the learner needs to know. The next step is to determine the appropriate level and verb from their Bloom's wheel. Let's use this presentation as an example. So one of the learning outcomes from watching this video would be for the learner to remember the hierarchical categories. So I would use the wheel to identify the appropriate level and verb, which in this case would be remembering. And then I would determine the best possible measurable activity for the learning outcome. So in this instance, I would write the learning outcome as List the Bloom's Taxonomy Pyramid Categories in order from top to bottom. When developing learning outcomes, keep in mind that this wheel is not all-inclusive and that there might be a better measurable action verb for you to use that is not listed on this wheel. Also keep in mind that learning outcomes need to be measurable or observable and that they identify what the learner will know and be able to do by the end of a course or program. Another thing to keep in mind when you are developing your learning outcomes is to avoid using vague descriptions like understand, be aware of, learn, or any other non-measurable description. Now that you have completed this introduction to Bloom's Taxonomy, take a look at the Bloom's Wheel provided in your workbook and try to come up with some of your own learning outcomes for this video. What would you develop for a lower order thinking skill and a higher order thinking skill?